Hello and welcome to Episode 5 of the Kerbex Interplanetary Space Program. My name is John, and today we're going to be covering several launches as we distribute advanced satellites throughout the Kerbal system. This rocket, containing the Athos probe, is one of three identical rockets to be launched on this mission. Each probe has a different destination throughout the system that would either be difficult or impractical to send a manned mission for. The lower cost of these simple rockets means that we can generate a great amount of profit while still providing enough scientific data to make the trips worthwhile. The destination for our first probe, Athos, is the planet Jewel. Jewel is substantially harder to reach than either Duna or Eve, and a manned mission at this time was deemed too complicated and expensive to undertake. However, numerous contracts require a great deal from the system. So the Athos probe was sent to fulfill those contracts without risking Kerbals and without spending too much of the program's budget. The Athos probe, much like the Porthos and Aramis probes launched to Eve and Duna, contains sufficient fuel to perform a moon landing. However, Jewel doesn't have a solid surface for us to land on, so we use some of that fuel to visit Jewel's moons, both to obtain scientific data and to fulfill some contract parameters to make a little bit of extra money off of the trip. Having completed its primary mission, the probe converts to a permanent satellite to provide continuous profit from space around Jewel. The Aramis probe, seen here approaching Eve, has a slightly different mission. We've already visited Eve and in fact landed a probe on the surface, but we were unable to pay as much attention to its satellite Gilly, which we will be attempting to land on with this probe. Landing at Gilly is a very slow process, as the moon is so small and has such a tiny amount of gravity that even when we're touching the ground we still have a little bit of bounce to it. Regardless, the probe is able to touch down on the planet's surface and attain the entire suite of scientific data. With our contracted landing complete and all scientific data sent back home, Aramis converts to a full-time satellite around Gilly to provide continuous profit going forward. Porthos, the final probe in our program, begins its approach on Duna. As the Tidarium has already visited Duna and dropped a probe on the surface, Porthos's target will be the moon Ike that orbits Duna. Ike is substantially easier to land on than Gilly. The gravity is still very low, however, the approach doesn't take nearly as long. Like all of the craft in the Musketeer program, Porthos converts to a permanent satellite around Ike. 
With advanced satellites deployed throughout the system, around Duna, Eve and their moons, as well as Jewel, it's time to replace the outdated satellites around Kerbin and its moons. This spacecraft, the Shuttle Axiom, was designed not only for the deployment of these advanced satellites around Kerbin and its moons, but also to facilitate crew transfer between both our orbital and lunar facilities that are either in development or already launched. The Axiom builds on the success of previous designs. Not only is it capable of lunar vertical takeoff and landing, but its large cargo bay permits a wide variety of contracts to be fulfilled, as well as permitting the deployment of our advanced satellites. In addition to these features, the shuttle also carries a complement of eight crew, which is useful for changing shifts on our large space stations. With the satellite successfully deployed, it's time to replace our more outdated Kerbin Sat. It's sad to see it go, as this satellite was the first we ever successfully put into orbit. The success of this program has provided sufficient research and funding for us to pursue our next major objective and the focus of the next episode of the Kerbex Interplanetary Space Program, a lunar colony. My name is John. Thank you for watching.